Evet. Before to discuss um, the Unruh effect, I, I would like to uh, uh, give a, a brief reminder of uh, what is uh, light front quantization. Uh, I know we have uh, several uh, experts of light front quantization uh, attending this uh, uh, this seminar, uh, but uh, some some of you may be less uh, familiar, so I, I will spend a few slides on on this. Um, so. <clears throat> um, in uh, in relativistic kinematics, uh, you have no uh, unique choice of uh, time parameter. So when you're parametrizing a, a world line, what you have to do is uh, make a specific choice of uh, separating the the 4D space time into a 3D space and uh, when the uh, one dimensional time. Uh, there's two uh, usually usual uh, convention to make this uh, this separation or this foliation. Uh, this convention are also called forms. Um, one is the instant form, uh, which is using the Galilean time, and that is the usual, most commonly used uh, way. And then there's the front form, uh, which is using the light front time uh, that is parallel to the, the light uh, the light cone. So the, the light front time uh, is usually uh, denoted X plus or tau, and is defined as the, the Galilean time plus uh, one of the uh, special uh, dimension uh, coordinate. So the, the front form was developed and uh, advocated by uh, Dirac, and it's widely used in particle physics uh, due to its uh, many advantages. Some of them I will uh, I will mention in the in the next slide, but also because it's the natural framework, uh, a natural framework to describe uh, high energy reactions such as, for example, uh, deep inelastic scattering of lepton of a proton, and the reason for that is because in this reaction, uh, all the, the particles are uh, ultra relativistic, so they're basically uh, sitting on the on the light cone. So uh, how did Dirac come up with uh, his uh, forms of uh, relativistic dynamics? Um, so the, the physical symmetry of uh, 4D space-time is a Poincaré symmetry, which which is uh, composed of uh, 10 uh, basic symmetry. Uh, we have um, three uh, invariants uh, under space translation and one invariant under uh, time translation, so four, um, four invariants under space-time translation. We have also three invariants under um, uh, rotation. And finally, uh, we have invariants also under Lorentz boost, uh, simply meaning that it doesn't matter which uh, inertial frame you choose to, uh, to do your uh, analysis uh, in. Um, now, the Poincaré symmetry uh, involves space and time, and because it involves time, uh, some of the generator of the Poincaré symmetry group uh, will be a dynamical operator, meaning that um, they will involve uh, interaction. So the most well known of those type of dynamical operator is the, the Hamiltonian, which is giving us the, the time evolution of the system. Um, so there are those, uh, the other uh, operator will not involve interaction and are called uh, kinematical operators. Now we all know that uh, dynamical problems are much more complicated to solve than uh, kin kinematical ones. So uh, an insight of Dirac was to uh, say that we should um, foliate uh, for this space, separate uh, space and time in such a way that minimize the number of uh, dynamical operator. So uh, there's different possible uh, way to uh, make this uh, separation. Um, the most common one uh, and the, the, the one that has been using historically is uh, to simply use the, the usual coordinate uh, system. Um, and that and uh, when we define the generator with this uh, um, a coordinate system, we obtain the, the instant form. Uh, the instant form has four dynamical uh, operators and six kinema kinematical operators. Uh, but Dirac identified that is a, a better way to, to do the foliation, which is by uh, using the light co uh, coordinate system. So this gives us the, the front form, which has only three uh, dynamical operators, and uh, seven other operators are, uh, are kinematical. Uh, the front form is the, the form that has the smallest number of uh, dynamical operators. Uh, there's uh, three other uh, way to, to make the foliation, but they're almost never used because they involve the larger number of dynamical operators, and also they're not as intuitive as the instant form or, uh, or the front form. 
So uh, let's look first at the, the instant form. Uh, so as I mentioned, it, it, it's employing the, the usual Cartesian uh, system. And that's the, the form that is familiar uh, to us since our uh, early uh, school days. It's intuitive because uh, due to its non-relativistic uh, nature, and because of this, it's what is uh, mostly used in uh, uh, all fields of, uh, of physics. Uh, however, a problem with this uh, instant form is that it's not explicitly Poincaré invariant, and if you use it in a relativistic dynamics, you, you will induce a fictitious dynamical effect. And by fictitious, what I mean is uh, you will induce subjective um, effect um, that cannot pertain to an objective description of the, of the system. So an analogy to that is uh, um, if you're uh, doing the, the classical Newtonian uh, mechanics in uh, non-relativistic dynamics, you're free to choose uh, a non-Galilean uh, that is a non-inertial frame. But then uh, if you do that, uh, you will have to uh, deal with uh, fictitious forces such as the centrif centrifugal or uh, Coriolis forces. Uh, so using the instant form is uh, uh, as uh, an analogous uh, issue of uh, bringing up uh, subjective descriptions. So let's look at, uh, for example, uh, Lorentz boost in the in the instant form. Uh, so the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the boost are three of the 10 generator of the, the Poincaré group. And as you all know, uh, well, uh, when you do a boost of, uh, of, uh, of a frame, what you do is you rotate the, the time uh, axis by the, the rapidity of the boost, uh, and then you also rotate the the z-axis by the same angle, but uh, uh, in the opposite uh, uh, direction. Uh, so what you can see that when you do a boost uh, in the instant form, you're mixing uh, um, uh, space and time of one uh, frame into the, the other frame. And, in, in, and this is because, uh, and this is the way you're uh, introducing fictitious dynamics uh, in, the, in the problem. Uh, meaning, again, fictitious meaning you have a, a frame dependent uh, dynamical effect that, that arise. So um, it's not surprising that this is uh, happening because um, the, the three uh, instant form uh, boost are, uh, are three of the four dynamical operator of the instant form, the fourth uh, dynamical operator being uh, the, the Hamiltonian. So this is a problem uh, because boosts are needed to describe uh, high energy reaction. So for example, if you have the, the scattering of uh, an electron out of a proton of uh, four momentum P, uh, then the proton is boosted from uh, uh, its, its initial four momentum P to its final four momentum uh, P, uh, say P plus Q. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and this boost uh, in the instant form would, will introduce uh, a frame dependent dynamic, uh, fictitious uh, dynamics into the, the description of the proton structure as you deduce it from, uh, from this uh, reaction. So the bottom line is that uh, if you use an instant form description of uh, high energy phenomena, then uh, you will include a subjective um, dynamical effect. So let's look now at the, the front form. Uh, also, sometimes I, I will just call it the light front. Um, so as I uh, show already, the, the time is defined as the, the Galilean time plus uh, one of the uh, special uh, coordinates uh, here chosen to be Z. Uh, one of the um, uh, front form uh, Special coordinate is uh, defined as again the Galilean time, but this time minus uh, z, and then the two other uh, special coordinates are the same as the instant form. And in this talk, I will often omit uh, discussing the, those uh, transverse uh, coordinates because they're not uh, relevant to the discussion. So uh, I will mostly focus on the, uh, the front, uh, front form uh, space and front form time. So now that uh, we have a different uh, time and space, we also uh, have a different energy and, uh, and momentum. The uh, energy in the in the front form is equal to the energy in the uh, instant form minus the z component of the momentum. And the front form uh, momentum is the energy plus the z component of the uh, uh, instant form momentum. Uh, while the transverse uh, momentum are the same as the instant form. Now, uh, if you 
uh, look at, uh, at uh, uh, Lorentz invariance quantity. Uh, it doesn't matter if you uh, 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 look at it into, it should be invariant in, in uh, regardless which form you're using, uh, which implied that the, the, the metric of the instant, uh, the, sorry, the metric of the form form has to be different from the metric of the uh, instant form, and that's, uh, that's the metric uh, that needs to be used uh, in the front form here. Um, if you look at the relation between the, the front form time and front form, front, uh, front form uh, space, uh, how it relates to the instant form time and, uh, and space, you see that uh, this is not uh, a Lorentz uh, transformation. So the two frames are not related by a uh, Lorentz transform. And that means that uh, the, the two descriptions uh, in the instant form and the uh, form front, uh, front form will be uh, different. So let's look now uh, again at uh, Lorentz boost, but in, uh, in the front form. Uh, the effect of, uh, of a boost uh, in the front form is uh, to uh, rescale down, to scale down the, the time, uh, the time axis, while the, uh, while the space axis it is uh, scaled up. So you can see that um, the, in, in case of the front form, there's no mixing of time uh, and space, uh, the, the axis direction stay the same and uh, there's no uh, fictitious dynamics uh, that appears during a, a Lorentz boost. Uh, and that's why uh, Lorentz boosts are kinem kinem kinematical operation uh, uh, in the front form. So as I mentioned, there's three uh, kinemic kinematical operator in the, uh, in, on the uh, front form. Uh, one is, of course, the, the front form Hamiltonian. The two other uh, dynamical operator are the rotation uh, along the, uh, around the, the transverse direction, X and Y. And fortunately, this type of symmetry is usually irrelevant for uh, analyzing a, a high energy uh, problem. The, the only uh, relevant symmetry is around the Z axis. So we don't need uh, to consider this type of symmetry. Um, and uh, for all purpose, uh, we have only one uh, dynamical operator and all the rest, uh, all the other useful operator being kin kinematical operator, which means that the form front can provide an objective description of uh, high energy phenomenology. So then what is uh, light front quantization? Light front quantization is simply uh, a can the, the the canonical uh, quantization of the field using the light front system. And the uh, one thing that's important to, to keep in mind for this talk is that the communication, the commutation relation uh, are, uh, will be set at a constant time. And in the, the case of light front quantization, then the constant time is constant light front time. All right. So uh, there's uh, many advantages of the form front. Uh, several of them are important in the context of uh, studying uh, the Unruh effect. Uh, as I mentioned in the, the previous slide, the, the form front uh, provide uh, an objective description of, uh, of, of the phenomena, the, meaning that there's no frame dependent uh, fictitious effect. Uh, another advantage is, is that it's, the, the mass are typically uh, simpler in the form front compared to the instant form. And, the, and studying the UNRO effect is a, a case in point for this advantage. Uh, when you look at the, the equation um, in the form front or in the instant form, they're almost always um, simpler in the, in the form front. And you, you will see that as I, uh, I go to the, through the derivation of the UNRO effect using both instant form and, uh, and front form. So the mass are simpler and the last advantage, um, which is actually the, the most crucial one for the, the UNRO effect is that uh, the vacuum uh, uh, in the form front uh, quantization, in light front quantization is, uh, is trivial. So the reason for that is because in, uh, all light front particle must have a positive uh, momentum, but uh, by definition, the, the momentum of vacuum is zero. Uh, so if you consider that, together with the fact that uh, we must have momentum conservation, then we cannot have any uh, vacuum loop. Otherwise, one of the particles of the vacuum loop uh, must have a, a negative momentum so that the, the total net momentum is zero, but that's uh, kinematically forbidden. So um, the, the light front uh, vacuum is trivial and there's, not, there's no uh, bubbling pairs of uh, um, 
virtual particle, uh, as we usually describe uh, the vacuum when we discuss the, the vacuum in the instant form. So after this uh, short uh, tour of uh, light form quantization, we were ready now to, uh, to discuss the, the Uno effect in, uh, in this uh, context. So uh, the Uno effect is the statement that accelerated observer can detect particles uh, that are uh, unobservable to uh, an inertial observer. And this occurs uh, this occurs even uh, if the accelerated observer is in vacuum. So what it means is that uh, if you're in a, a, an ideal vacuum, that means really nothing, not even uh, cosmic microwave background photon, just uh, ideal vacuum, uh, and then you start accelerating uh, a detector, uh, then this detector will, uh, will start to detect a particle. And that's the statement uh, from the uh, UNRU effect. This effect was uh, uh, independently derived by uh, three different persons in the, in the 1970s. So the formal reason for the, the UNRU effect is that the, the proper time of an accelerated observer is different from the time of uh, an inertial observer and it's not related by a, a Lorentz transformation uh, because we have one of one of the observers is uh, attached to a non-inertial frame. And in that case, if the time are not related by a, a Lorentz transformation, then the vacuum uh, for the two uh, frames are different. Um, then the, the vacuum that is attached to the inertial frame appears to be populated by real particle to an accelerated observer whose own vacuum is empty by, uh, by definition. So that's, uh, in short, the, the reason for the UNO effect as, uh, as derived in the instant form. So the UNO effect has actually been never uh, detected experimentally. The, um, the, 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 the prediction is actually uh, very hard to, to verify because you need a, an extremely large uh, acceleration to, uh, to, to produce something observable. And uh, we're uh, we're not uh, techn uh, our technology is not yet quite yet there to uh, to really unambiguously uh, make, make a detection of the UNRU effect. So it, it remains to uh, it remains a, a theoretical uh, prediction. Um, but despite that, it's a very important uh, piece for uh, uh, knowledge for uh, contemporary physics because uh, by the Einstein equivalence principle, the Unruh effect is the equivalent of, uh, of the Hawking uh, effect, that is the, the evaporation or the, the fact that black hole uh, radiates particle. Um, so the Einstein equivalence principle is telling us that uh, an acceleration is uh, equal to a gravitational force, is the same as a gravitational force, which is formalized uh, as a space-time co curvature in uh, general relativity. So the Noe effect, uh, in fact, allows us to, uh, to study uh, quantum gravitation, um, but uh, on a, a flat space-time. So, Maybe you're not uh, too familiar with the, the Uno effect uh, interpretation, but you're certainly familiar with the, the Hawking effect and uh, its interpretation, which is that if you have uh, a vacuum loops uh, that uh, uh, occur near uh, an event horizon, then uh, one of the, the particle, one of the virtual particle of the, the loop uh, may fall beyond uh, the event horizon. And, when this happened, then it's prevented to, uh, to come back to annihilate with the, the other uh, virtual particle, then uh, this particle uh, has to become real. Uh, and to do that, it, it borrows energy from the, the black hole in, in the case of the Hawking radiation or from the uh, frame acceleration in the case of the UNO effect. So that's the interpretation for those uh, two effects. Uh, but we have just seen uh, at the start of this uh, seminar that uh, because uh, on the light front, uh, the, the vacuum is uh, trivial because uh, momenta have always to be, uh, must always be uh, positive. So there's no loop of virtual particle um, in the, in the light, uh, on the light front. Um, and this begs the question of what's happening to the UNRO effect in, uh, in light front quantization. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll look at that in the rest of this uh, seminar. So we'll uh, first uh, consider uh, an inertial frame uh, with coordinate uh, x mu uh, and the vacuum zero. Uh, we'll also consider a, a field phi. And uh, in, uh, in, in the rest of the talk, I will uh, uh, use the simplest case of a massless uh, scalar field in a, a 2D space time, so one 
time dimension and only one time uh, and only one space uh, dimension, uh, which is the usual uh, simplification that, that is used uh, when, when we describe the, the UNO effect. So uh, we have this uh, scalar field. Uh, we can do uh, the usual, usual expansion of the, the field in terms of uh, a plane wave. Uh, which is, uh, in other words, uh, a field decomposition in terms of uh, positive and negative uh, frequency modes, with the mode here uh, being, a, as I said, a, a plane wave. Uh, but the, the denomination of positive and negative frequency mode is a bit of a, of a misnomer because we always uh, impose uh, that we have a positive frequency uh, in this expansion. So the, the frequency omega of the wave uh, is defined to be always uh, positive. So what we mean here by uh, a positive and negative frequency mode is that when you take the, the time derivative of the mode, uh, then it, bring, it brings down a, a positive uh, quantity, which is omega, and the minus sign here comes down uh, only because of the, the usual choice of the metric uh, when the, uh, the NO effect is studied on the on the instant, uh, in the instant form. So positive frequency mode are the one that, uh, that, that give this, uh, uh, are the one which the derivative of the, the, the mode uh, give this, uh, this quantity and the negative frequency mode give the, the opposite uh, in terms of sign um, uh, quantity. So the, the positive frequency mode are uh, associated with particle, while the, the negative frequency mode uh, are associated with uh, antiparticle. And in fact, you can recognize here uh, in this uh, field decomposition that the, the, the coefficient of the, the Fourier transform is the annihilation um, operator uh, for, the, for the mode. And uh, the coefficient for the conjugate of the, of the mode is the, the creation uh, operator. So for the uh, instant form, the, the mode has uh, the, the usual uh, expression of, uh, of a plane wave. And as I, uh, you recall, I mentioned that uh, in the, uh, with, with the light font, the, the metric is different. So this is the, the expression of the plane wave uh, using the light font uh, coordinate. Uh, now let's consider another frame, X prime, which is uh, not necessarily um, an inertial uh, frame. Uh, and we will do, so this frame will have a, a different, uh, a priori different vacuum, um, zero prime. And uh, we will do again a field decomposition in terms of positive and negative frequency. Um, but uh, now the mode, uh, because it's a different frame, uh, the mode may be different, uh, which means that the coefficient of the mode uh, will be different. Now, unless the separation between positive and negative mode is the same into the, in, in the two frame, um, if, uh, if, this is, uh, if it's the same, uh, then uh, this coefficient will be the same as this coefficient, and this coefficient, uh, the, the creation operator will be the same as the creation operator in the, in the first frame. But if it's not the case, uh, then um, some of the mode, uh, some of the positive mode uh, in this frame uh, might be viewed as negative uh, frequency mode in this frame, which means that uh, this uh, coefficient uh, here will be a uh, linear combination of this coefficient and this coefficient. So, and, and the same is true for the, the creation operator, which uh, will become a linear combination of uh, this annihilation operator and, and this creation operator. So uh, we may have uh, uh, this annihilation operator, which is a linear combination of, uh, of these uh, two operators. And uh, that would be the case if, um, so which means beta is different, of the, uh, uh, is different from, uh, from zero. This will be the case if uh, this uh, second frame is not an inertial frame. So now if we apply this, uh, annihilation operator to the, the vacuum of the second frame, uh, then it, it should annihilate the vacuum by, uh, by definition. But now if you apply this annihilation operator to the vacuum of the first frame, uh, then you can replace B by its uh, linear combination. Uh, this first term here uh, will annihilate the vacuum uh, because that's the annihilation uh, operator for, uh, for this vacuum. But then we have also uh, this term that involves the creation operator. So this one will not annihilate the vacuum. 
and uh, B will not uh, be uh, B uh, applied to, uh, to to the vacuum will not be uh, zero. Uh, we will have some particle, and uh, this is uh, the Monroe effect. All right, so uh, that's the the, the general uh, way uh, the, the Monroe effect is uh, is derived. Um, but let's look at how this is working specifically. Um, and uh, we'll start uh, by looking at that with inertial frames. So what we will be discussing with inertial frame is uh, actually very trivial, but it's a, a nice baby step to uh, to take uh, before we start considering the the, the more interesting case of uh, non-inertial uh, accelerated frame. So uh, we have a first frame here uh, with the coordinate t and z, and then we have a second frame uh, that is boosted with the rapidity uh, theta. And uh, as uh, we we discussed earlier, uh, the, uh, the the consequence of boosting the frame is to uh, rotate the the two axes, the t and z axis, uh, toward um, the the forty five degree uh, direction. So in the instant form, uh, we have uh, the, the the following um, positive and negative mode uh, expansion uh, with uh, with the mode uh, being equal to um, uh, to, to the to the plane wave uh, in in the the first frame uh, the, the 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 mode is proportional to, uh, to to this expression and then in the, uh, the the boosted frame then it would be equal to this expression with omega prime the, the boosted frequency and p prime the, the boosted momentum so we want to look now uh, to see if uh, the the to see if the, the definition of positive and negative uh, frequency mode are the same in the two frames, we want to look at the derivative with the proper time of, uh, of the modes. Uh, and it's obvious from this expression that the derivative of the, of the mode uh, will be uh, simply bringing down omega prime. But in order to, to, to deal with the more complicated uh, case of non-inertial frame, uh, I'm going the long way here. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm using the chain rule to, to obtain this expression uh, and then um, applying the, the expression of the um, uh, Lorentz transform of uh, omega prime and, and p prime, uh, we, we get uh, this expression. You can recognize here the, the expression uh, for the, the boosted frequency. So this, uh, this quantity is uh, omega prime and uh, that's what we obtain at the end as it already obvious from, uh, from this expression. So what we see here is that the, the frequency of the boosted frame are the, the boosted frequency. Uh, we have the, the relation, uh, the, the dispersion relation that is telling us that the frequency, which is always uh, positive, is equal for a massless field, massless scalar field, to the uh, the magnitude of uh, of the momentum. So if you uh, uh, plug this uh, plug this in, uh, you see that uh, omega prime is uh, proportional to omega time uh, this quantity, which is simply an exponential of plus or minus uh, the rapidity. This is always positive, so omega prime has the same sign as omega, uh, which means that uh, the 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 separation between positive and negative mode is consistent in the two frame. Uh, that means that uh, the annihilation operator in the boosted frame is the same as the annihilation operator in the the first frame, and there's no you know, effect um, uh, when we consider inertial frame as it should be. So uh, this is all uh, rather trivial, uh, but as I said, it will be useful uh, to go through this. Um, when we go through the, the, the real case of uh, an accelerated frame. So we can do the same uh, with the front form. Uh, here's the front form uh, coordinate with time and, uh, and space. Uh, as I mentioned, when you boost uh, uh, a light front frame, uh, you uh, rescale down the, the time coordinate and you scale up the, the, the space coordinate. Uh, and then uh, we can go through the same step as we did for the instant form, but at the end, what, what happens is the same. We pull down uh, by taking the derivative uh, of, the, of the mode uh, with the, the proper time. We pull down the, the boosted frequency, uh, the relation between the boosted frequency and the, the, uh, uh, the first frame frequency is, uh, is as follows in the, in the light front. Um, this is always, uh, this is an exponential, it's always positive. So 
the boosted frequency again has the same sign as the as the frequency, and we reach the same conclusion as the as in the instant form uh, with a consistent separation of positive and negative mode. The uh, annihilation operator are equal for the two frame, and there's no uh, unrow effect. So all right, uh, now we can graduate to an uh, accelerating frame, and uh, we'll. Uh, uh, formalize an acceleration as a, a continuous succession of boost uh, with uh, a changing rapidity. So here in this example, we'll uh, uh, consider the, the rapidity as uh, increasing linearly uh, with, uh, with time, uh, either Galilean time in the case of the, of the instant form or uh, light front time in the case of uh, uh, the, the light front formalism. So in the case of the in instant form, what the acceleration is uh, is doing then is that it squeezes more and more the, um, the time and the space axis uh, toward the, the 45 degree direction. Uh, again, what we want to do is to, to check the, the consistency of the, the definition of positive and negative mode uh, in the accelerated frame uh, compared to the, the definition in the, in the rest frame. So we, we do the same exercise as we did uh, within an inertial frame. We take the derivative of the mode with the, the proper time. Uh, and we find that uh, we have uh, this uh, boosted frequency term, just like in the, in the inertial case. And we have also an additional uh, term uh, written here. One of the factors of, uh, of this term, uh, this factor here turned out to be a Lorentz invariant and also always positive. Uh, but we have this factor here, the, the derivative of the of the, the rapidity uh, that is not Lorentz invariance, and that's not a surprise at all. We actually need a, a Lorentz violating term uh, in the result because we know that the accelerated frame are not inertial frames. So this is uh, where the the Lorentz violation comes in. Uh, and if we uh, explicit uh, this term, we find out that it has uh, this uh, this expression. Now we can look at the, at the sign of, uh, of this term uh, uh, in function of, uh, of time and, uh, and space. And here is, I'm plotting the, this, uh, this function uh, versus uh, t and z. Uh, in red, I'm plotting the function when uh, it's positive. And in blue, I'm plotting the function when it's negative. And you can see that uh, its, uh, uh, its sign is oscillating uh, widely. Um, here uh, on this uh, on this plot, I, I show the projection uh, of, of this function with z, and here in the bottom plot, I, I show the, the, the projection with uh, with t. So the, the bottom line is that uh, there's no uh, definite sign uh, for for this derivative. It it's, can be positive or negative, and it can be uh, very large. So this means that uh, we have an inconsistent separation of positive and negative mode in the two frame. One positive frequency mode uh, in this frame can be a, a negative positive mode in that frame, uh, which uh, means that uh, we mixed the uh, creation and the uh, annihilation operator, and uh, we have uh, an unrow effect uh, in the instant form. So now we can uh, look at the same uh, with the front form. So again, uh, when we uh, uh, boost the uh, the frame in the in the front form, uh, we we will uh, continually uh, rescale down the, the time axis and uh, continue, continuously uh, scale up the, the space axis. Uh, but we will never uh, change their orientation. Their orientation uh, uh, remains fixed. So uh, we uh, what we do is then um, we, we do the same. We take we look at the we look at the derivative of the of the mode uh, with the, the proper time and what we uh, get uh, is something similar that we get in the instant form. We get uh, the, the the boosted frequency um, with uh, an additional term. Uh, again, this factor here is a, a Lorentz invariant factor that also turned out to be positive. And uh, uh, and just like in the instant form case, we also have uh, a Lorentz uh, violating term that is the derivative of the uh, rapidity of the of the boost. But now the difference is that if we explicit this term, uh, this, uh, this derivative, it's, uh, it's equal to this expression. Uh, we have chosen u to be positive um, uh, by definition. So this is a positive term. This term is an exponential, so it's also positive. Uh, we start at t equals 0, so we also define uh, the light front time to be positive. So overall, we always have 
uh, this uh, quantity that is positive, um, which means that um, the, the sign of uh, this quantity uh, in the accelerated frame is the same as the sign of this quantity in the in the rest frame. We are not mixing uh, um, annihilation and creation operator, uh, which means that there's no inro effect uh, on the front form as we could intuit uh, since uh, the light front vacuum is trivial. So, um, uh, so that's uh, one way to, uh, to show uh, the absence of the UNRWA effect uh, in, the, in the front form. Uh, here I'm going to make a connection uh, with the commutation relation and the vacuum structure to uh, give a, a, another way to, another intuitive way to see uh, why the, the UNRWA effect is not uh, arising in the light front. So as I mentioned uh, earlier in this talk, uh, canonical quantization is done at constant proper time. And the Heisenberg uncertainty principle originate from those uh, canonical, um, uh, uh, sorry, from those uh, commut commutation relation. That means that the uncertainty principle will also operate at the uh, equal time. And that's uh, the underlying reason why the instant form uh, vacuum is complex. So we can see that by considering the propagation of a field from uh, T1 uh, to T2. So the propagation should happen in the time-like region because uh, of causality. Uh, and uh, if uh, this is uh, what is happening, then we have a, a direct propagation from T1 to, uh, to T2. But because of the uh, uncertainty principle, it may happen that uh, sometime uh, event two leaks into the, the space-time uh, region. In this case, uh, event one and event two are uh, space-like separated, and the time ordering of uh, the two events is frame-dependent. So in some frame, we can have T1 that is actually uh, larger than T2. And in that case, the pro propagation follows this, uh, this picture. Uh, we have uh, an initial particle that, uh, that propagate. At T2, we have a creation of uh, an antiparticle and a particle. Then at a later time, T1, the antiparticle annihilate uh, with the initial uh, particle, and the particle in the, in the final state is the one that was uh, created at, uh, at T2. So uh, this is uh, called a Z-graph for an uh, obvious reason. And the trouble with the graph is that they have uh, negative probabilities. So in order to, uh, to maintain um, uh, unitarity, uh, then we need to, uh, to add vacuum loops uh, to, to, to balance out the, the effect of the negative probability of the, of the z-graph. And that's how the, the vacuum disconnected vacuum uh, loops uh, appear in the, in the instant form. Now, uh, if we have an accelerated frame, uh, the, those uh, virtual particles may borrow a full momentum from the acceleration process and become observable, and that's uh, the UNRWA effect uh, in the instant form. Now we can uh, look at the same reasoning, but in the in the uh, with light form quantization, uh, as I mentioned, um, the uncertainty pro uh, principle uh, must uh, uh, operate at equal time, but this time equal time. Uh, on the light front mean equal light front time. Um, so the, uh, the the uncertainty in position uh, will be along the the, the 45 degree uh, line here, along, along uh, the x minus um, uh, coordinate. And you can see that uh, um, the, the event uh, two can never leak into the space-like region. So, uh, uh, event one and event two are always uh, time-like separated, and we have always direct propagation. Uh, we don't have uh, z-graph that arise, and because we don't have z-graph that arise, uh, we also don't have a vacuum loop that are needed for uh, compensating those negative probability. Um, <clears throat> so that's the reason why the, the, the light front um, vacuum is trivial. Uh, now, if you uh, boost the boost or accelerate uh, the frame, what happens is that you only rescale uh, those, uh, those axes and you don't change their orientation. So uh, no matter uh, what you do, uh, you, you never leaked into the, the space-like uh, region uh, and there's no no effect in the, in the instant form. Um, you could have also uh, followed the, the same argument uh, as a, 
the, the one I mentioned earlier in the in the seminar that um, we have no uh, vacuum loops because of uh, momentum conservation and the fact that the, the vacuum has a, has a zero momentum. Uh, so th this is this is equivalent. Uh, but I, I, I think this uh, this way of looking at uh, at the, the process or at the, at the system is more uh, more intuitive and uh, uh, more telling. All right. So the 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 discussion on the UNRWA uh, effect that I had so far uh, is, I believe, very intuitive, uh, but they are not the standard derivation. Um, so if you're familiar with the UNRWA effect, or if you want to, to become familiar with the UNRWA effect and, and start looking at the uh, textbook, uh, you uh, you will be uh, more, uh, you will be exposed to the, the standard derivation that was uh, introduced by UNRWA uh, back in 1976. So I will quickly go through the standard derivation uh, to show you how it, how it works in the instant form and in the, the, the light font. Uh, and for that, for the instant form, I will uh, closely follow the, the, the textbook of uh, Sean Carroll. So here uh, we have uh, an accelerated uh, particle that describes uh, this, uh, this trajectory. It's a constant acceleration. Uh, in the instant form uh, frame, it, uh, this, uh, this curve describes uh, an hyperboloid, uh, meaning that uh, the, the square of the time is equal to the square of the, the space minus the, the constant acceleration. Uh, but then if you consider the, the instant form, uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 light front, uh, the light front coordinate system, uh, the, the parametrization of, uh, of this uh, trajectory is, uh, is an hyperbola. Uh, the, the time is simply uh, inversely proportional to the, to the space. So um, this uh, type of trajectory uh, suggests that we can define a, a new coordinate system called the, the Rindler uh, coordinate system uh, with Xi and eta. Xi is the Rindler space uh, coordinate and eta is the Rindler time coordinate. Mm -hmm. The relation between the Rindler coordinate and the instant form coordinate is uh, as follows for the space and time. And the relation between the Rindler coordinate and the light front uh, coordinate system is, uh, is as follows for, again, uh, space and time. So um, uh, when you have a, a constant acceleration uh, in, uh, in Rindler space, uh, uh, you uh, describe what is called uh, an orbit in Rindler space because your, uh, your Rindler um, space uh, coordinate is constant and only the time is evolving. So it's like if you have a, 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 like if you have a, a rotation, I'm sorry, um, an orbit, a circular orbit uh, around the around the massive body, uh, you you have the, the radius that stay constant um, and only time is uh, is evolving. Uh, so that's what is an what an acceleration look like um, in the Rindler uh, in Rindler space time. So uh, this uh, new coordinate system, the Rindler coordinate system, uh, this defined um, here, actually only cover uh, this uh, quarter of uh, space time. Uh, we may have also propagation in uh, in the other uh, side of the of space time in this in, in this region. So in order to fully describe uh, space time, uh, we need to also define the Rindler coordinate system in uh, this region four here. And uh, this is defined simply by uh, uh, adding a minus sign uh, to to this uh, to those uh, definitions. So the, the relation between uh, the Rindler coordinate system in region four uh, is is as such uh, just the same as in region one, but uh, with uh, uh, a minus uh, sign factoring the, the expressions. So now what uh, we want to do is to look at the uh, decomposition of the of the field in terms of uh, uh, of uh, a plane wave. Uh, but because we have partitioned a space into uh, two relevant uh, in, in four regions, but two, only two are relevant, uh, we need to have a distinct uh, Rindler mode in the two uh, regions. So uh, the field is uh, decomposed uh, as followed with uh, um, uh, one, uh, one, one mode and it's uh, uh, conjugate in a region one with the associated annihilation operator and the creation operator. And then we have uh, another mode, uh, G4, and it's con uh, conjugate 
in, uh, in Region 4 with, again, uh, their uh, associated annihilation and, uh, and creation operator. Uh, now we can look at the field in the in the inertial frame, which uh, is called uh, the Minkowski frame here. Uh, and because we have no space-time partition in the in the Minkowski frame, then the field is uh, decomposed as uh, as usual, uh, like I I, uh, I showed uh, in the in the previous slide. Uh, this is the decomposition in the instant form, and this is the decomposition in the in the light front uh, coordinate system. And then with those uh, three different uh, decomposition of the of the field, uh, we have three uh, different uh, vacua. Uh, we have the, the vacuum of the, the Rindler space, which is annihilated by this uh, annihilation operator uh, B1, and is also annihilated by the uh, annihilation operator B4 from the from region four. We have also the vacuum from the uh, Minkowski frame uh, defined with the instant form, uh, which is annihilated by the annihilation operator uh, A here. And we have also the vacuum uh, of the Minkowski frame uh, in the, uh, with the light form coordinate, which is annihilated with uh, this uh, annihilation operator uh, AP plus. So uh, to derive this effect, what uh, Unruh did is that he combined um, the, those uh, Ringler mode in such a way that the combination match the space-time dependence of uh, the Minkowski uh, mode. So in, in other words, what he did is, uh, he, is he found out, uh, he found what should be the combination of, uh, of those Ringler mode so that the, the separation between uh, uh, positive and negative frequency mode is the same as uh, for the instant form. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, as the same as the inertial frame. Um, um, inertial frame. So um, the, the Rindler mode combination that have the same uh, space-time dependence as the, the mode in the, in the Minkowski frame uh, are called uh, H1 uh, for region 1 and H4 uh, for uh, region 4. Uh, I write them in red uh, when I consider the instant form, and I, write, I will write them in blue when I uh, consider the, the light front form. And by definition, by construction, the operation, uh, the annihilation operator of those uh, modes are uh, annihilating uh, the vacuum of the, the, the Minkowski frame, uh, since they have the same uh, space-time dependence as, uh, as, those, uh, as those modes. So uh, when you uh, work, the, uh, work out the mass, you find out that uh, the, the combination uh, H is, uh, is as follow. It's uh, a combination uh, of um, uh, the mode uh, G1 uh, plus um, uh, a contribution from the um, conjugate of the mode uh, uh, of the mode uh, G4. Um, so that's the, what, what you find in the instant uh, form case. And if you do the, the same in the light form form, you find that uh, uh, the, the combination is actually uh, directly equal to the um, uh, to the to the mode in the in the in the light front frame, and uh, I should have written this uh, FP plus. Um, so the reason why we have only one term here is that uh, uh, there is no um, uh, G four term um, that is available in the instant form because this term would have a, a negative uh, momentum. Uh, and this is forbidden um, kinematically. So the reason why we have this simple relation is the same reason why we have no uh, light, uh, why the, the light from vacuum is, uh, is trivial uh, in the instant form. So then uh, from uh, this combination, um, uh, you can, de uh, you can uh, derive uh, what is the expression of the annihilation operator of uh, of, of the field in the expanded in Rindler mode in terms of uh, annihilation operator of the, the combination. And uh, the end result is the, that it's the same combination as, the, as for, the, as for the, the mode themselves. The annihilation, um, annihilation operator uh, B1 is the, has the same linear combination uh, with here the um, annihilation operator C1 and here the creation operator uh, C4. 
and then because uh, uh, the, the two modes, uh, the Ringler mode and the right front mode are, are equal, uh, then the annihilation operator in the, uh, of the Ringler mode is the same as the annihilation operator uh, uh, on the light front. Then if you apply uh, those annihilation operator to the, the Minkowski vacuum, uh, then this one annihilate by construction the vacuum, while this one is a creation operator, so it will create uh, a particle and uh, the annihilation operator of the Ringler mode applied to the Minkowski vacuum uh, will not uh, annihilate uh, this vacuum. And that's how the, the Unruh effect arises uh, in the standard derivation. And of course, uh, in the, the light front, uh, the two um, annihilation operators are, uh, are proportional. So the uh, Rindler, Rindler mode um, annihilation operator uh, is, a, is annihilating uh, the Minkowski um, uh, vacuum uh, on the light front, and there's no uh, in effect in the light front. So I've shown uh, three different ways to establish the, the Unruh effect in the instant form and the Unruh effect in uh, and the absence of Unruh effect uh, in the light front. Uh, but that, that creates a problem because nature doesn't care uh, which way we, we choose to analyze it. At, at the end, the, the, the end product of the analysis should be the same. So um, uh, eventually we, we need to come an ag uh, to an agreement uh, of, the, of the two analyses. Um, so here I'm going to uh, to discuss a, a possible solution to this uh, to this conundrum, and it's based on the, the realization that uh, an instant form boost is uh, dynamical, and uh, this together with the fact that uh, during an acceleration uh, the rapidity uh, is time dependent uh, makes uh, makes us realize that uh, uh, any detector that is used to measure the, the Unruh effect uh, is dynamically affected by the, the continuous um, sum of boost with the uh, varying um, rapidity. So uh, an Unruh detector is often uh, called a, a thermometer because the, the Unruh particles are uh, thermally uh, distributed at, uh, at what, what is the, uh, called the, the Unruh temperature. So uh, a thermometer is uh, is uh, equivalent to uh, is an equivalent name to uh, a Unruh detector. So uh, as a simple thermometer, we can uh, consider a bunch of uh, deuterium gas, and the temperature will be given by the uh, the Maxwell uh, Bolt Boltzmann law together with the distribution uh, between the 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 ground state, the spin equal zero state. And uh, the the first excited state of the the theron, uh, the spinless one uh, state. So <clears throat> in the in the instant form, uh, what happens when we have a, an acceleration of uh, this thermometer is that uh, so we we accelerate the thermometer, it gets into thermal equilibri equilibrium with the the vacuum that is at uh, uh, the room temperature, so the the temperature of the of the of the thermometer will uh, will rise to the, the Unruh uh, temperature, but it has also long been known that uh, when you do a dynamical boost, uh, you induce uh, a fictitious, uh, meaning a, a frame dependent uh, spin orbit uh, forces, uh, and that has been uh, realized even before the, the demonstration of the, the Unruh effect, first by uh, McGee uh, in. Uh, in 1967, and then uh, later emphasized by uh, uh, Brodsky and Primak uh, in 1968. And uh, what this uh, spin orbit force uh, is doing is that it's depopulating the excited state uh, to the to the ground state. So in other words, uh, the, the dynamical effect of the boost is uh, cooling uh, the detector. So uh, in one hand, we have a, a warming up of the detector from the Unruh effect. And uh, in the other hand, we have a cooling of the detector due to the uh, fictitious forces uh, that arise uh, in the instant form. So now we can analyze the uh, this acceleration in the light front. The boosts are kinematical, so there is no uh, uh, fictitious spin orbit forces. Uh, and the vacuum is trivial, so there is no uh, unroot temperature. The unroot temperature is zero. So there is no uh, no uh, effect uh, in one way or another. And that suggests that uh, in the instant form, uh, this uh, warming up of the detector will be uh, exactly uh, compensating with the, the, the cool down of the detector uh, from, uh, from the, the dynamical effect of the, of the boost. So 
uh, the, the cooling effect of the uh, instant form boost have been uh, uh, overlooked in the in discussion of the UNRWA effect. So when this effect is discussed, there is no uh, compensating mechanism uh, for the warming up, and uh, the UNRWA effect then uh, seem to be objectively observable. So uh, to conclude, um, we can find a common claim uh, in, uh, in the literature that there is no need to test or to question the UNRWA effect because it's a direct and logical consequence of uh, quantum field theory. You can find, for example, this uh, statement in the, in, in the standard uh, review of the, of the UNRWA effect, or you can also find this uh, similar statement in the Scholarpedia page on the UNRWA effect, which was written by uh, one of the, the discoverers of the, of the UNRWA effect. And yet, uh, we have a, a legitimate approach of quantum field theory, like from quantization, that has proven to, to be working very well uh, in high energy physics. And this uh, legitimate approach of quantum field theory is not predicting uh, an UNRWA effect. In fact, what he's suggesting is that the, the UNRWA effect is an artificial effect, uh, meaning a frame dependent effect that is cancelled by another uh, artificial effect, which is the cooling uh, of. Uh, of uh, an uh, unrow detector due to the, the dynamical evolution that occur uh, from a succession of uh, instant form boost. So um, if there is no unrow effect, uh, this will have uh, important consequences. You, you remember I, I mentioned that the one reason the UNRWA effect is very important is because due to the equivalence principle, the UNRWA effect is uh, equivalent to the Hawking effect. Uh, so if there's no UNRWA effect, then there is no uh, Hawking uh, uh, radiation, that means there is no black hole evaporation, and there is also no black hole information paradox, which is one of the most severe uh, problems of uh, contemporary physics, uh, how to resolve the, the, this uh, information paradox. So if uh, this is uh, uh, correct, then the origin of this, uh, this grave uh, problem has the same origin as uh, another uh, very serious problem of uh, contemporary physics, which is the, the value of the cosmological uh, constant as computed from uh, quantum field theory. If we, uh, if we accept that the cosmological constant comes from the, the energy of the vacuum, uh, and if we use the instant form to compute uh, this, uh, this energy, we find a huge number that is uh, uh, completely off from the, the, the small uh, observed number. Uh, and this is uh, happening because uh, the instant form vacuum is, uh, is complex. But if you consider uh, the fact that uh, the, an objective description of the vacuum uh, yield a, a trivial vacuum, then you don't get this, uh, this huge discrepancy as was uh, 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 pointed uh, uh, more than 10 years ago by, uh, by Stan and, uh, and collaborators. So um, at the end, um, if we use uh, light front quantization and if we can recognize uh, artificial effect, uh, then we may solve in, a, in an identical manner two of the most troublesome problems of uh, contemporary physics, which are uh, the, the black hole information paradox and uh, the cosmological constant problem. Thank you. That's uh, the end of my uh, seminar. S thank you very much, Alessandra, for the very nice and compressive talk. Question from the audience? Any questions? Yeah, yes, I have questions. Yes, continue, Benjamin. Uh, so, uh, so if you go to your uh, previous slide, on. Uh, uh, before that, uh, about the cooling effect. Then what happens if you are uh, uh, using a, a, a finite quantity of uh, deuterium and you perform the acceleration for a long time, so all your uh, state will be depopulated and then uh, the cooling effect will stop or, or not? But... Uh, but... So you, the description you're giving is is the instant form, right? So it's true that you will keep depopulating. Uh, uh, you you will keep depopulating the, the 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 excited state, but in the same time you will be you will be warming up uh, with the UNRWA effect. So what has to be uh, what, what I want to make clear now from this talk is that I'm not saying that uh, UNRU and, and the other were wrong in, in uh, deriving their effect. There's no mistake in what they did. Uh, there is 
if you do the analysis in the instant form, there is a, a warm up of the of the detector. Um, that's 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 not question. Uh, what is question is that is it the only effect uh, that happened, um, and and uh, the answer that is suggested by uh, by the light font analysis is that no, it's not the it's not the only effect. We also have a cooling effect that has been known for a long time, and that exactly compensates this. Um, so, um, if you choose to to think in terms of the instant form, it's true you will have a, a continuous cooling of the detector, but you will have also continuous warming of the detector, and they, they will always balance each other uh, regardless of when you're looking at the, the system. When you have a thermalization with uh, the uh, UNRU temperature, so the effect of this is uh, maybe excited some states which are uh, at S equal zero to again. Oh, yes, yes, that's exactly what's happening. So, uh, so you, let's say you start with a, um, a thermometer that is at zero temperature, then you accelerate it. Uh, then according to the instant form, your vacuum uh, will have a, a given temperature, uh, T and rho, and those, this, this temperature simply means that you have a real particle that have some, uh, some given momentum, and those particles will interact with the, the deuterium and excite it to, the, to the, the, the excited state, and that's how you, you warm up the, the, okay. the thermometer. Mm -hmm. More question from the audience? Any more questions? If there are no more questions, we send Alexander for the very nice and very comprehensive talk. Thank you so much, Alexander. Thank you. So you, do you want me to send you my slides? Uh, because I, I know it was a, a lot of <laughs> stuff to unpack. Uh, with the, ah, yes, with it would be great. Yes. So I, I can yeah, send you my slide and and uh, uh, one can look at uh, at them uh, uh, more quietly than uh, this, uh, this this quick <laughs> uh, exposition. Thank you. All right. Thank I, have you. Another, I have another comment. Uh, uh, I, yes. uh, I mean, I, it's just uh, something I've so uh, I'm I'm not sure I will say it correctly, but once I've heard that. There is a difference between a Newtonian gravity and and uh, and uh, Einstein gravity in the sense that, for instance, if you look at a, a free falling uh, electron, for instance, so uh, the point of view of uh, Newtonian gravity is that this uh, uh, electron is accelerated, and then it should uh, emit uh, something. But from the point of view of uh, Einstein gravity, this uh, electron is not. Uh, Accelerating is just uh, following a, a, a geodesic, and so there there is no acceleration, and so it should not uh, uh, emit uh, anything. And 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 I I think that the difference between these two situations is, I mean, apparently it's not uh, uh, possible to to measure measure this, but so there, there is a, also a different uh, conclusion of uh, the depending of uh, of uh, of the point of view from Einstein gravity or Newton gravity, if the uh, free falling uh, electron uh, should uh, 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 radiate or not, uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, I'm not saying it's related, but it's kind of also. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice point. I, I I never came across it, so it's uh, thank you for uh, for pointing this out. It's uh, it's interesting, uh, and you know we should I should I should have known that uh, that. That there's this this upon discrepancy. Uh, I, I will keep it in mind, and, and uh, but yeah, I also don't think it's related to the the, the topic. But it's uh, it's an interesting uh, observation. Yeah. Well, uh, in any case, thanks for your presentation. It was uh, quite uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It was a, a pleasure to uh, to discuss this. Thank you very much, Alessandra, for the very nice talk. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. And um, we meet at the next seminar. All right. Is there any more right. question? No more question from the audience? I see that no. So we meet at the next seminar. Thank you so much, Alessandra, for the very nice seminar. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you. See Good you. Night. Goodbye. See you. Bye.